Nar, my name is Gerardo Giri Asensio. I am your host to the SN Network. And with me today, week after week, my co-host, Carmen Palumbo. Thank you, Jerry. Hola, Nar family. Yo soy Carmen Palumbo. I'm your co-host to the ESN Network, the official talk show of the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, a donde el negocio y cultura se conectan, where Latino culture and business opportunity intersect. My Nara family, I want to let our viewers know that we will not have any ESN the next two Mondays in observance of the holidays. So on today's show, we have Big Daddy Juan Martinez back in the studio by popular demand. <laughs> That's right. Our followers on Twitter requested Juan back. Now make sure that you're balancing work and family. And now let's get started. We have our second national event coming up right around the corner, and I hear that there's a big change coming this year in March, correct? That's correct, Carmen. Just like we prepare our members to plan for 2013, well, NARA also has to be planning our policy and Hispanic lending conference in DC. Okay, well, what does that mean exactly? Well, there are many important aspects about the homeownership experience for Hispanics, but at the core of every single transaction, most of them out there, is of course the lending. Hispanic families don't achieve homeownership until the loan funds. So with that in mind, Carmen, this year's policy conference in DC will have a special focus on Hispanic lending. What's happening in regards to the challenges, the policy changes, and the opportunities around Hispanic lending. So there's no doubt in my mind that NARIP is always on the cutting edge of the Latin Latino home ownership market. How do you survive in this market with the change of policy? What can a selling agent do? This is like a how do you how do you I'm Armando for Orlando Business and backed by popular demand. Juan Martinez, yes, we do listen to your Twitter request. Juan Martinez is our president-elect, but also the number one Latino agent in the country. Thanks for coming in, bro. Thank you, Armando. So Juan Martinez closed 584 transactions last year. Of those, 250 plus were buyer side sales. How did you do it? Is it team oriented, the agent mindset? That's what our agents are probably gonna to wanna to hear. So we're looking for agents that are hungry. I mean, it's important when you have a team, there's a lot of accountability. I mean, our agents have to, my, my buyer's agents have to show up at 8.30 in the morning for a meeting every morning. Then we go into role play and immediately getting on the phones, either doing follow up, they're prospecting, we're looking for new buyers. I mean, we work with motivated buyers. Now, most of the agents out there, our members are telling us, you know, the lack of inventory. They have buyers, they're getting frustrated. How do you overcome that when you have a motivated buyer? What do you tell your agents? So, one, we plow, we plow right through it. You know, a lot of it is mindset. Mm -hmm. One, if, you're, if you are doing your buyer presentations when you originally meet with a buyer, you're setting the expectations. If the buyer is motivated and ready to purchase, they are going to perform the way a good strong buyer should, meaning submitting above list price, so on and so forth. The majority of our buyers, 90% of our buyers we work with are first time home buyers, second time home buyers. Uh, usually we're not working with investors. Many agents get frustrated in the marketplace working with investors that they're submitting 20 or 30 offers before they get one accepted. They're trying to get it 10 or 20% under list price. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're vo very motivated to work with motivated buyers ready to buy now who want to take advantage of the rates, want to take advantage of the price. And that's where you actually are setting the expectation on that first meeting, correct? Absolutely. I remember we hung out a couple uh, months back and you had told me about calling these short sales that have been pending over 150 days. Last month, I think we put four or five in contract just off that. Could you talk a little bit about that? What's the, lo consejo, what, what makes you say that? So it's important in a, in a market where there's a lack of inventory. We know there's a lack of inventory across the country. So one of the, one of the things that you do is you look at different, how, do, how am I gonna find inventory in the marketplace? Uh, where am I gonna cultivate that? One thing is building strong relationships with listing agents you know, across the market. Number two, the idea that I've given you is in our market, there's only eight or 900 short sales available listed, uh, but there's over 10,000 short sales that are under contract in our marketplace. A lot of them have been in pending status for over six, 10, 12 months. In many cases, those buyers have already, are long gone, they already purchased somewhere else. Those listing agents don't know that. So as, if I have a buyer that's motivated and I find a property that's been in, you know, in pending status for over six months, I'm gonna connect with that listing agent and say, hey, I have a buyer, we could close this in 30 days. Are you already approved with the lender? Can we move forward? In many cases, their buyer, when that listing agent goes back to their original buyer, that buyer's long gone. 
and let's finish it off. Great advice because it, it's helped, it's worked, it's tangible, we want to get to our viewers. But for you to close that menu, you mentioned that they know an offer from you is solid. For our lending members out there, the originators, what do you look for and your agents look for when trying to find a lender to work with? Look, when we work with lenders, they have to perform, period. They got to close the deal when they say they're going to close it. If our close of escrow is 45 days or it's 30 days and we're submitting that offer, we are got to make sure that the originator says we can close the deal. Another thing is the communication between the originator and the customer. You know, the customer has to, of course, the customer has to perform for the originator. In many places, blame is thrown everywhere and the deal doesn't close. How do you measure their customer service? Jerry previously had mentioned that he appreciates when the lender shows up to the signing table. How do you measure the customer service? I, I would say follow-up. Follow-up is follow -up the mm -hmm. most important thing. To the consumer or the lending to, experience? To, or to, the to the agent, to the consumer, and, and letting all parties know this is where we're at, letting the listing agent know. See, in order, we have to create a reputation that we close deals in the marketplace and when an offer is submitted by this company, by this agent, we know the deal is going to close. And if you don't have that reputation, then there's a good chance that you're not going to get your offers accepted. Having the best lenders, having multicultural uh, originators, you know, having, uh, you know, our loan officers in many cases speak Spanish, they connect with the customer, we right. deal in a multicultural market, okay. and that is so important that we have that connection. 584 transactions, 50% of those were buyer sides. Eso no se puede discutir. You cannot argue that. Juan, thank you once again for showing up. Thank you, Armando. And we'll see you job. next time on Hablando Business. Monday's ESNs. They're informative, they're inspirational, they're educational. And now for el tip de la despedida. Wait, 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 Jerry. First of all, I want to say to my Nara Familia, I'm going to give you a nice holiday song here. This is Jose Feliciano. And then you can continue. Thank you. <laughs> And having said that, el tip de la despedida is to actually be grateful. Be grateful for your blessings, for your family, for your local chapters, for your associates, for everything that's around you. On behalf of NARIP National, however, it's also a time for us to do a big shout out to all the people that make NARIP possible. Thank you for being part and being partners at NARIP. Brad at Wells, Rodney at Chase, Glenda at Bank of America, mil gracias. We also have Maria at Citibank, Sean, the Irish at Impact. We have Tanya from Realogy, Fred at NAR. Also a big shout out to Mike at Union Bank, Rich at Schwab, Latanya of course at Prime Lending. Todd at ResNet, Lionel at First American, Sean from Quicken. Big shout out to Patty and Rick from NAF, Lou at Prudential, and Rick Davidson at Century 21. I want to wish you all a great week and remind you that we will be back after the holidays. There will be no ESN on the 24th and the 31st of December. And again, on behalf of the ESN family, we wish you a very happy holidays. Mwah. Bye, guys. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero amor y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a... Hola, Nora family. Yo soy Carlos Palumbo. Feliz Navidad. Mando besos. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Feliz Navidad.